The feature that impressed me mostly inside Angular 17 is called Defer or Deferable Views. This is why in this video you will learn everything that you need to know about how to create them and why they are so awesome. So first of all you must understand what is a deferrable view. This is the view which will be rendered not initially but after some time or based on some condition. Why do we need that at all? Just imagine we have a huge Angular application and we are rendering lots of stuff on the screen different components and probably most of the components are not needed on initialize, which actually means we can defer them and not show or load them at the beginning and it will make our application much much faster. So the main idea is to load for user only information which is needed on initialize and then all additional information we can load later and in Angular 17 it is possible to do it in extremely comfortable and flexible way with deferred views. Let's have a look. Here I have just an HTML with a content and nothing else. What I want to write here is defer without any options at all and the div inside and inside I want to render an app child component. So what is app child? As you can see here on the right, I have a child component and this is nothing but a selector app child with template child. The main point is that we don't need app child component for our initial load. This is something that we can load later. How does it work? I'm jumping to the browser and reloading the page. And essentially the only difference that you can notice is after a lot this child is blinking a little bit and the whole content does not blink. This is because the differ by default has an option on idle and on idle means that framework will render this piece of code only when more important tasks are finished. How does it look in network? I'm reloading the page. And as you can see here we loaded different things and at the end here we have a chunk which was loaded quite late. And here we can open a preview and check what we have inside. And as you can see here this is exactly this child component which was loaded. Which actually means it was not bundled together with initial files, it is in additional chunks and just by writing this code Angular loads it dynamically. And just for you to understand it better, this defer block is exactly the same like writing on idle, because this is a default option. And as you can see in browser nothing changes, it works exactly the same. Now let's look on all other triggers that we have. And the most popular trigger for sure is on viewport, which actually means we are loading our block only when it comes to the viewport. If it is outside of the viewport, we don't load it at all. This is why here we can write on viewport and we have exactly the same app child. But as you can see here we are directly getting an error, viewport trigger with no parameters can only be placed on a defer that has a placeholder block. Which actually means here we must create a placeholder. This is why here let's write placeholder and inside we can simply write a div with text placeholder. The main point is that this placeholder will be rendered until we loaded this child. For example, if this block is off screen, we are rendering there a placeholder and only when this block is coming inside viewport, we are rendering this app child. I made console bigger here so our element is off screen and inside our elements, inside body, you can see that inside app we have our markup with content, but after this we have a placeholder. This is just our div with placeholder and not the component, we don't execute the logic inside that component. But now after I scroll a little bit, you can see that our child component was rendered instead because our element came to the viewport. Most importantly is we didn't load this chunk with that component at all and we're doing it only when this element comes to the viewport, which actually means we're making our application much faster. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing, it helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. Another possibility is to write here on interaction. And this will happen when we are interacting with this element. As you can see on initialize we have placeholder, now I am clicking on this element and the child is rendered there. And as you can see I didn't bind any click events here. But on interaction is exactly when we are interacting with the element and only then it will be loaded. 
For example, it makes a lot of sense to implement load more with this functionality. Another possibility is to use on hover, which works similarly, but it reacts when we're hovering the element. Another trigger that we have is on immediate. It means that we try to execute this block as soon as possible after full page rendering. I'm reloading the page, and as you can see, the placeholder is there for split second, and then the child is being rendered directly after rendering our page. And the last thing that we have here is on timer. We can execute it after some time, for example, after two seconds. I'm reloading the page here. And after two seconds, this placeholder is being changed in child. It is also important to remember that we can combine triggers. For example, here we have on timer, but we can also make here on hover. Then we put semicolon and we have on timer. Now I'm reloading the page and I'm hovering and directly hover works. But if I reload the page and wait two seconds, then my timer will work, which actually means we can write any amount of triggers that we want to combine them. Another thing that we have inside defer is when we can write a condition inside defer to trigger it at some point. For example, here before our defer, we can create a button, for example, load, and inside let's make a click event and change its visible property to true. Now I want inside my app component to create this visible property and set it to false by default. So this button simply changes is visible to true. Now inside our defer we can write when is visible, which actually means this defer will be triggered when this property is being set to true. We're reloading the page, we see here placeholder and it will forever stay as a placeholder and only when I'm clicking here load we're getting here our child, which actually means we can write some logic for the first, like maybe we're rendering this content only when we got user from the backend. And the most popular question that I see on the internet regarding defers, people are asking, is it the same like ngif? We're writing ngif user to render some information when we're getting a user. And here we are writing when is visible, just like ngif. And you must understand these are two completely different things. ngif simply hides something from DOM and that's it. It doesn't render this information in the DOM. Defer works completely different. It doesn't load anything at all and it doesn't execute your component, but it stores it inside additional chunk and loads it later when you need it. This is a completely different behavior and it is much better for your performance. Because if you have NGF for 10,000 elements, it won't be performant because you still have all this logic inside. With defer, it will be performant because your logic won't be there at all until certain point. Now we must talk about prefetch inside defer. So what we can do, we can prefetch our chunk before we use it. Until now, we didn't control that, which means we're loading it only when defer must be used. What we can do here, we can write when is visible, this is totally fine. But additionally here, we can write prefetch when prefetch condition, which actually means I must create this prefetch condition property here and they want to set it to false. Now here on the top, let's copy this button and set prefetch condition to true. So here I want instead of load, write show and here will be load, which actually means we're separating when we load this chunk of data and when we show our component. So here when I'm clicking load, you can see that this chunk was loaded and it is available for us, but our placeholder is still there and only when I'm clicking show button, you can see the child was rendered which actually means with prefetch we can fully control when we're fetching something and when we're rendering it. And we can use all these triggers that we have inside defer with prefetch. For example, here we can write prefetch on idle and it means that we will prefetch this specific chunk as soon as we have resources for that. And essentially this is the best part of defer because we always want to load everything as soon as possible to make transitions for user much faster. As you can see here, I am reloading the page and this chunk was already loaded. And now I can click on show button and this child will be rendered without need to load this chunk. And the last thing that I want to show you is the full notation of defer. So here I want to remove our buttons and just write defer, for example, on viewport. This is how we will typically use it. After it, we have a loading. So here inside we can pass, for example, after 150 milliseconds and minimum 150 milliseconds. 
and inside we can render a div with text loading. Now we have a placeholder and here we can also write some condition, for example minimum 150 milliseconds. And inside we have a placeholder and after this we have an error. And inside error we can just write a div with text error. And this is full notation of the fur. So first of all we are writing here what block we want to render. After this we have a loading. So this code inside loading means that we are showing it only after 150 milliseconds, but for minimum of 100 milliseconds, which actually means it should not blink and confuse the user. And now here inside placeholder we have a minimum of 100 milliseconds, which means until we show loading, we show this placeholder. And it might happen that loading we don't show at all if we are getting this information back fast. And if some error happens, then here we are coming to the error block. How does it look on the screen? I am reloading the page and here was placeholder for 150 milliseconds and then directly child. We didn't see loader at all because we didn't load information that long. So as you saw, deferred views are amazing, but if you missed another features of Angular 17, make sure to check this video also.